Hello, hello. Birth story time. Um, I did not think I would be posting this to YouTube. I am bringing a lot of people to a channel and a time in my life that some people might have not known about. Most of my followers are still from YouTube, so, and that's what, like, all you guys said you wanted me to post my birth story on, but I really wanted to do Instagram. My phone was not, my phone and Instagram were not letting me do that, so filming on an iPad and posting to YouTube. Here we go. Uh, yeah. So, my birth story, I guess it's just time to tell that. I haven't told it. Um, one, because I tried to film it so many times and it just wasn't working, and also it's taken me a little while to kind of be ready to share it. Um, I just would cry all the time <laughs> when I would share it, just because it was a little traumatic for us both, um, Blake and I, well, and Little Whitfield. He made a special entrance into the world. <laughs> um, so yeah, I obviously, I mean, people know this, but for some reason I just wanted to say it that this is just my birth story, how it was for me. I know everyone's is different, could be so different, could be similar, could be better, could be worse. Um, but yeah, this is just my birth story and how it was for me. So let's dive in. Also, I'm not editing any of this. I'm just talking and posting it. So there could be just random awkward pauses. Sorry for that. Um, but okay. Yeah. So it has been six weeks now since we have had a little bit field in our lives. Um, and it's been a really great six weeks. He is such a great baby. Praise the Lord. Um, it is so nice to have a great baby for your first baby. So we are very thankful. Um, feeling a little lucky and a little sorry because I know some people don't get this great of a first baby. But we're taking it and we love him. And um, yeah, so I had my six week checkup today and cried when I went to the hospital because <laughs> it just brought back some memories I did not like. Um, when being there. So my due date was May 23rd and I went, I had him four days after my due date. Um, I was actually scheduled to be induced four days after my due date, but um, Wednesday the 26th, I went into labor on my own. My water broke and I was really happy about that. So I guess I should say like my birth plan, I don't know, birth plans are kind of funny to me because I just feel like they could just never ever work out but anyway my birth plan was I wanted to go to a hospital um, and I wanted to do everything completely natural and unmedicated um, I wanted to go into labor on my own wanted my water to break I wanted to do most of my labor at home you know if possible um, I wanted to do skin to skin. I wanted Blake to cut the umbilical cord. So yeah, that was my birth plan. Um, I did end up being able to go into labor on my own. My water broke at home um, around 10.30 on Wednesday, May 26th. So yeah, three days after my due date. And that was, yeah, that was a funny time. So I woke up that morning actually at 7.30, went to the bathroom, had lost my mucus plug. Um, and I did have my membrane sweeped a couple days before that. So the day after my due date at my doctor's appointment, I decided to have that done. Don't know if that did help, who knows. Um, but I did go into labor on my own. I lost my mucus plug. And then as soon as that happened, I actually had a few contractions. Um, they were only like maybe 20, 15, 20 minutes apart and there were only three of them. So not a lot, nothing big, but I was like, okay, this could mean something's happening soon. Let's get this going. So I was about to go on a walk. This is around 1030 that morning and I'm putting on my deodorant and I thought I'd pee my pants, but my water broke. So that was fun. And I will just say, I did not know that liquid never stops coming out of you. <laughs> like from the time your water breaks to the time that you have your baby. Um, yeah, I did not know that was a thing. So that was not fun. I just didn't enjoy that feeling. 
uh, yeah, so once again, that might be TMI, not once again, I didn't say this, but that might be TMI to you, and I'll just say now there'll probably be things in here that might be TMI, so if you don't want to hear it, you can go, I guess, but anyway, so yeah, that happened around 10.30, um, I called Blake and then called my doctor, and Blake got home, my doctor was like, yep, yeah, definitely your water breaking, get to the hospital as soon as you can, because I did test positive for group B strep, so they wanted me to start my antibiotics as soon as possible. Um, so we got to the hospital at 11.30, and I, they checked me, and I was only, like, I wasn't even a full two centimeters yet. I was really close, but for the last four weeks, three or four weeks, I was barely at a one. So the fact that I wasn't even to a full two yet was a little disheartening, um, and a little frustrating. So... I, they told me, oh yeah, I guess I didn't say either. When my water broke, it was very yellow green and I didn't know that that means, that meant that he had pooped in there. Um, so, and I didn't even, my nurse didn't ask me and I didn't think to tell them until like a couple hours later at the hospital. So I didn't really know that's what that had meant, didn't know it was supposed to be clear. So that was just something that they, you know, wanted to keep in mind, keep an eye out for, um, especially for like when he comes out. But anyway, that was one thing, and then, yeah, they checked me, I was only out of two, and they said that since he had pooped and my water had broken, within six hours they wanted me to start Pitocin if I wasn't progressing at all. So, wasn't progressing at all, had to start Pitocin, that was around four o'clock, and then probably around six-ish, I started feeling a lot more contractions. They weren't hurting, but I was definitely feeling them. Um, and I was having them before, like when they hooked me up, I was definitely having them. I just wasn't feeling them yet. So around 7.30, I was really feeling them, but they weren't painful until like midnight. And at around 12.30, I was, 12.30 that night, I was three centimeters. So not progressing much at all, but at this point I'm having contractions like every couple minutes and they're very painful. Um, I did do everything unmedicated so that I did stick to that part of my plan. Um, I only had back labor though. From what, I, I never had what I was told a real contraction should feel like. I never had that. I only had back labor, which I've been told that that hurts more I have no idea I'm sure some people would say yes some people would say no and then another reason I didn't want to go on Pitocin was because I just had also heard that that can make your contractions like worse pain wise and so I really didn't want that so I really didn't want to be induced either because I knew I'd have to have that but had to have it anyway it happened so yeah three centimeters at 1230 I through the middle of the night, I progress a little. By 6.30 in the morning, I'm six centimeters. Um, in between that time, still having contractions, like less than two minutes apart, honestly. I was having them very frequently, some just one after another, that, like they didn't stop. Um, and I started throwing up a lot, and that was not fun. <laughs> but, well, it wasn't fun, but it kind of took away from the pain a little bit of the contraction, so that was nice in a way, um, but throwing up is never fun. So yeah, I would get pretty nauseous and throw up from the pain. Um, never had a fever though, which I was really happy about. But, so yeah, 6.30 in the morning was at a six, a couple hours later at an eight, and then finally around 11.30ish, I was at 10 and I could start pushing. So I pushed with the nurses for a good hour and a half, um, maybe two hours. And then the doctor finally came in and I got to stop pushing with her. Um, and then this is where like everything kind of went crazy. Little man never stopped moving actually the whole time I was having contractions. He was just non-stop moving, which really was not fun. That was very painful <laughs> during contractions. So he, like I said, he was just moving all the time. So when he came out, he turned um, so I don't know how long I pushed with the doctor, but maybe 30 minutes or less. I don't know. Um, I would say less than that, but 
I finally we got his head out but then when his head came out um, his shoulder got stuck and the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck um, and then like, I didn't really know what was happening I just know all of a sudden the doctor was like okay his shoulder's stuck I'm gonna have to cut you you guys start pushing like they sort of pushing on my pelvis and my stomach to help move him and get him out um, and he just did not want to budge. He was a stubborn little one and he was stuck for almost five minutes. Um, yeah, five minutes of them pushing on me, um, going up, trying to pull him out, trying to turn him, me feeling every little bit of this, which was not fun. And yeah, him just like not breathing during this time. And I'm just kind of out of it because I feel like I was kind of maybe in shock a little bit more of like from the pain um, but then also you know I'm like what's happening like I don't know what's really going on because I will say I was very very happy that the doctor she stayed so calm she did so well it wasn't my doctor um, she was not able to be there that day but I really loved who I had and uh, but yeah, she did so good at being so calm. My doctor today actually told me, she was like, she called me right after and she was really shaken up. And I was like, oh, well, I couldn't tell, but she did amazing. But I'm sure she was like, oh my gosh, we have to get this baby out because he's not breathing. We got to get him out. Um, and they're just, yeah, trying to push him. I guess really trying to break their shoulder. I didn't know that's what they were trying to do. Um, but to do that so that it can he can come out um eventually he came out about after yeah almost five minutes and they just immediately took him over and like i said i was kind of in shock a little bit i think so i like realized he wasn't crying but also i just was out of it and not thinking of it for a second um thinking about it and then all of a sudden i just like was like wait there's a baby here now and I just kind of look over and they have like the oxygen thing on them and I at that point I was like you know what's wrong what's happening um and they're like it's okay he is breathing just giving him a little bit of oxygen um and they said that he did just start breathing like he was finally breathing on his own and then they were able to suck out everything and meconium and all that um and then also after like I finally heard him cry and I was like oh, okay and then I was like wait like what is it <laughs> like, I didn't even know what we had had if it was a boy or a girl um because yeah Blake and I didn't find out if you didn't know that but Blake said he had seen when he first came out that it was a boy but he was just kind of worried about me and how I was for a second um and then they're like yeah it's a boy and I was like oh wow and I was like really excited and I finally got to have an exciting moment and then like right after that <laughs> the doctor was like so your placenta is not coming out I'm gonna have to go up and take all your placenta out myself <laughs> I was like okay not really thinking what that was gonna be like but then it literally felt like she was pulling a whole nother baby out of me it just felt like the exact same pain of what I felt when she was trying to get him out and so that just hurt again so bad and that just was not fun at all um so yeah I would say probably though that happened she was able to get it all out um and then just got to stitch me up and I so yeah she did have to cut me I think I said that she said I had a second degree episiotomy and then but I didn't tear really I don't I don't think I tore at all maybe a little bit um but other than that it was mainly just from where she cut me so that was I was kind of surprised and very thankful about that and then um probably about an hour almost I would say after I had him um they finally brought him over to me they just had to have the NICU nurses there oh yeah and I didn't say that um he did not break his shoulder which was so awesome his shoulder he has not had like any problems the first few days in the hospital he favored it a little bit but he would still put his arm up stretch with it it just wouldn't go like as high as his right arm 
but he has been so great with it now. He never really acted like he was in pain from it. Um, so yeah, such a miracle that he didn't actually break his shoulder and that um, he got him breathing and crying. He has some healthy lungs and yeah, he's doing so good now. And that was such a sweet moment of getting to hold him. Like now I wanna cry because I'm just thinking about when I finally got to hold him and they brought him over and he just started smiling and it was so cute. Um, but yeah, so that is the birth story. Um, I guess I can share like a little bit postpartum just since we're in it, the video and it's going, but postpartum has actually been great. I healed very well. I was Honestly, like two days after having him, I wanted to get up and walk around and obviously like hurt some, lots of pressure, could kind of feel stitches a little bit, but it wasn't at all what I thought it was going to be. It was a lot better. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. And then, yeah, within five days, I was really up and felt like I could walk very normal again, like completely normal, but I didn't, I definitely didn't push it. I mean, I tried to do minimal and Blake helped a lot and I was very very swollen like my well my whole body but my legs were very swollen so it did even hurt to walk on my feet just because of how swollen they were but other than that it's been great um when I got checked today I was cleared for everything looking good so that was exciting uh one thing my doctor did tell me was that I think it was called shoulder dysplasia is that that's what he had um and i've like heard of other people like that's happened to other people but she told me that that's actually kind of rare which i didn't know that i figured that was kind of a normal thing but she said it's more rare um but that with the way my the size of my pelvis and like my torso she said if i have because he was eight pounds 10 ounces and she said that if in the future um if i ever have a baby that looks like it's weighing more than eight pounds she said it is very likely that that same thing will happen again to me where another baby will get stuck um and she was just suggesting like maybe an elective c-section or to be induced a week early but she said like if you know baby's measuring a lot smaller then not to probably worry about it but that that unfortunately is something that i could have problems with if and when having more kids but that is definitely in the future don't want to think about having more kids right now <laughs> one day yes but not yet not ready for that especially since just going to the hospital made me cry so I don't think it's in the cards anytime soon um but yeah so I guess that was just something that was interesting and something interesting to hear about so we are all good now though I have a super cute super healthy little baby boy and I love him so much uh Blake and I I feel like we're doing great for you know the newborn stage we get to sleep a lot honestly because he's such a great sleeper he eats well um my i am breastfeeding but my supply is getting very low unfortunately i i mean i have no problem with giving him formula and supplementing that i just really wanted to breastfeed for a lot longer but he still feeds for me like probably twice a day maybe three but I am pumping, but whatever I pump, I have to give him like right then. I'm not producing enough to save. So, but I pump a few times a day as well, but he usually eats like bottle of formula, then breast milk, bottle of formula, then breast milk. So we're just learning things, you know, but yeah, it's going good. So I'm very, very thankful for how everything is um, or has gone. And yeah, that's the birth story. Sorry for making you wait, but thank you for watching. Sorry I'm not showing little whip baby. He's asleep, but he's such a cute little baby boy. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know because I post about him 24-7. <laughs> okay, so this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, if you have more questions, um, yeah, more like follow me on Instagram. This is probably the only YouTube video I'll post again, so 
Sorry for those who want more YouTube, but we're done. <laughs> okay. Bye.